Discover everything you need to know to get started in podcast advertising. And yes, it is a form of influencer marketing. You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. I'm Chloe Thomas, host of this marketing-focused podcast. If you are not familiar with our format, each month we focus on a different marketing method like email or SEO or Facebook ads. And each week I interview a different marketing method expert to explore their latest advice for you. This month we are all about influencer marketing and I promised you a curveball and here it is. Whilst we call it advertising or sponsorship, in reality, doing a deal to have your product mentioned on a podcast is another form of influencer marketing. It's just one where the influencer is using audio channels rather than social media or blogging. At first glance, it can seem a complex and difficult space to get into, but in reality, running a podcast advertising campaign is considerably easier than running Facebook ads. No, it it really is, and potentially far more lucrative. Our guest is going to take us through all the key things you need to know in a moment, but before we meet her, please do check out our sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Klaviyo, the email and SMS marketing platform that helps you send messages like an e-commerce expert, even if you're just getting started. Create your free account at klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Today, I'm chatting with influencer marketing expert Heather Osgood. Heather's been in marketing for a couple of decades and for the last five years has been specialising in podcast advertising at True Native Media. There, she and her team connect brands with independent podcasters to create great stories and ultimately drive sales. Frankly, I cannot think of anyone better to give us the 101 on podcast advertising. Hello, Heather. Hello. Thanks so much for having me on the show today. I'm excited to be here. It's great to have you here. As as someone who who funds pretty much her entire business through podcast advertising, I'm always happy to be spreading the word to other potential advertisers. Obviously, I'm not sure anyone listening is interested in sponsoring my show uh, as their retailers, but it's it's going to be really good to kind of show them just how straightforward a marketing platform it is, because I think people think it's as complicated or as scary as TV ads, and it very much isn't. So before we get into all of that, Heather, how did you get into influencer marketing, this this world we inhabit? Yeah, so I started my career actually in um, radio and newspaper advertising. And then I had a trade show production company for about 10 years. And when I sold that business for the first time in my adult career, um, I had time on my hands, which was very unusual. And I started listening to podcasts. And the more I listened to podcasts, the more I was very intrigued by the medium. And also I was very intrigued by the fact that most of the shows that I listened to didn't have any ads in them. And I thought, why is that, that some podcasts have ads in them and some do not have podcast ads in them. And so I started researching the industry and I came to find out that really the top, I would say probably one to 2% of shows, the really mega shows, they didn't have any problem with advertisers, but then there was everyone else. And I knew that there was really an opportunity for us to come and create something in the podcast advertising space. And the the reason that we really consider podcast advertising influencer marketing is because the company that I founded, True Native Media, we work specifically and exclusively with host red endorsement ads, which really is influencer marketing and honestly probably doesn't get recognized as influencer marketing enough. But that's really kind of what drew me into the space. And then once you're in podcasting, you just can't leave because it's amazing. <laughs> it is a crazy industry, but a very fun industry too. And Don't worry, we will explain what a host red ad is very, very shortly. But I think a lot of people have this perception that podcast ads are kind of like um, commercial radio ads. You know, it's like the song ends and then you get an advert for products you have no interest in at all. And you're wondering why on earth are these people advertising on the radio? And they're all jingly with funny voices and all the rest of it. And then it ends, uh, or or to be honest, you switch to a different radio station until it's over. Good podcast advertising is a very, very different experience. It's not really an ad break, is it? 
That's right. Absolutely. And the reason that I named, um, our company true native media is because native advertising speaks to the idea that the ad feels more like content. Now, of course, we are not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. We're not trying to say, Hey, this isn't really an ad when it is, but we really want the ads to feel as much like content as the rest of the show. Because the way that I approach things is that we all like to purchase products products and services that are going to edify our lives or, you know, make us happier in some way. And when the person that you know, like, and trust says, Hey, you guys, you know, this hello fresh meal kit has really made my life wonderful. You know, dinner used to be so stressful at my home. And now this has solved a lot of issues for us. That is something that your audience is interested in knowing about. And when the ad is created, well, it doesn't feel as intrusive as like you said, maybe a terrestrial radio ad would where it, it is something, you know, I was thinking the other day and, and I don't watch live TV very often anymore. So I'm not sure if this is the case, but I remember when, when you were listening or watching um, the TV, how you would go from your program to the ads and the volume would increase by like, you know, 10%, right? So when we think about these outbound ads as almost shouting at you in some senses of the word, they actually really were shouting at you, right? It's your content is over, your programming is over and we go to this ad break. And so so often it is even referred to as an ad break. And what we're trying to do with podcast advertising is make it a suggestion or a recommendation of a product so that it doesn't feel that intrusive interruption type of way that other ads do. Now, one thing I'll say to our regular listeners, or to be honest, anyone who's listening, is you will have already heard an ad in this podcast, which whilst it is read by me, the host, it is not a true host read because it's prefaced with me telling you you're going to hear about a sponsor and you hear the same ad in every single episode, which is very much not a host read. So I just want to make it really clear that the great quality advertising that Heather is talking about is not what we're currently doing in this episode of Keep Optimizing. I'm actually blushing as I'm saying this, but we will be very soon because I'm upgrading our our, our ad. So you you will be sucked into them as you are hopefully into the rest of the content. So Heather, what is a good host read ad? Unlike the ones in this particular episode, everybody's listening to. I think that you, you started out your comment with a really important piece, which is, it's not that you shouldn't, um, you know, whether you're purchasing ads or whether you're creating ads, it's not that you shouldn't say like, Hey, here's a word from our sponsor, but that's not the best way to create an ad, right? Because when we say things like, Hey, here's a, no a word from our sponsor, or here's a, uh, you know, the ad break. Essentially, what we are saying to the listener is now is the time when you should push fast forward. And we don't want that. And so in terms of creating a good ad, the first most important piece of a good ad read is that it needs to suck the listener in, right? Just like any other form of content that is being created. As you're listening, if you know if a story is being shared, usually I recommend that you start with a story, right? And if you can tie that into your content in some way, that is the best, right? So if you were, for instance, you know, a mom podcaster and you said, you know, guys, I complain about dinner all the time and it's my least favorite part of the day. And you guys know why, because I've said, da, 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 and I cannot believe how much easier my dinner has gotten. And so, you know, depending on, you know, just sticking with the, the same example that I, I was using, depending on the way that the host is able to construct a story that really pulls the audience in, that is the first pivotal piece is to get people to listen. Now we can talk about different ways and different strategies to get people to listen to the podcast ads based on placement, but content of the ad is really important. So you want to make sure that it's starting with something compelling that is going to get people to listen. Um, and then next you really want want that personal endorsement piece. And, you know, we've got different products out there. We're advertising a life insurance company right now. The average host isn't actually going to have signed up for the life insurance policy. So not every product is one that works well for endorsements. But if you're an e-commerce business and you sell a product, make sure that that host has gotten the product 
and that they also like the product because not everyone is going to love the product that you have. So we want that endorsement piece of, Hey, this is what I like about this. This is how this has made my life better. And then you get into any of those unique selling propositions. So what about this product is different? What makes you stand out? And of course you want the host to make sure that they mention those next. You would want a call to action. So in terms of a call to action, we would be looking at what is going to compel someone to actually make a purchasing decision. And then of course you want to give them some specific, you know, link promo code that is going to allow you to track the results. So those are really the components of a good ad. And the brilliant thing about that, which some of the listeners will have worked out, but some of you probably haven't because it's not totally obvious, is that as the advertiser, you don't have to provide the advert, do you? It's not like you have to write this for them. Give them some product, give them some bullet points, and your podcaster, your influencer does the work for you. So it's not very labor intensive for the retailer, is it? No, it's not. And, you know, gosh, in my my past experiences of working in different mediums, creating an ad, proofing an ad, making sure that everything is on point, that in and of itself can be a lot of work. And really what we're trying to do with podcast ads is create as authentic and organic a listening experience as possible. So not only do you not have to put the work in, I recommend that you don't. Because what happens is that when advertisers send scripts to hosts, then the host is like, oh, they want me to read this. I'm going to read it. I can do that. That's easy. I don't have to put any energy into it. (laughs) And that's not what we want, right? We want the ad to come from them. So it's really important that you be as loose with the guidelines that you give a podcast host as possible You want them to make the ad feel like it is coming from them, that it is part of their content. And then you also have to kind of sit back and let that be because every show is going to be unique and it is going to be different. That might mean that the ad might not sound exactly the way you would create it. But ideally, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, hey, this host connects really well with this listener and you want this listener to be your customer. And this host knows how to talk to that customer. And so let them speak to them in their language, because that's when you're going to get those results. When you try to, as an advertiser, get in there and manipulate the situation too much, that's when I find the ad reads don't turn out as authentic or as organic as we'd like them to be. It really is a true partnership, finding the right person who speaks to the right customer group who adores your product, and then it it can work super, super powerful. So Let's cover off a kind of, I guess, a couple of the key big questions people have, which is how long should they run ads for? Is this like we do two episodes and it's all good or do we need to run for longer for a good quality test? It really, I would say, does depend on the type of ads that you're running. So in the podcast space, there are two different types of ads. There are embedded baked in ads, and then there are dynamically inserted ads. So a baked in or embedded ad means that the ad is going to be within one episode. So let's say you purchased an ad in episode 100. When that listener listens to episode 100, they will hear the ad. If they listen to episode 99, they will not hear the ad. And if they listen to episode 101, they will not hear the ad. It's just in that one episode. The value of that is typically it's going to stay in there fairly indefinitely unless the host goes back at some point and strips the ad out. So that's an embedded ad read. And it is different than running dynamically inserted ads. Now, uh, dynamically inserted ads are inserted into a full catalog of shows electronically. So we might have a show that has, let's say, 500 episodes, and then you would look to a time period. So you might say for the month of January, anyone who listens to this podcast, to be at a current episode or a back catalog episode is going to get served the ad for your product. Now, one of the things I always like to bring up is that dynamic insertion 
definitely can and should be done with host red ads. So it really shouldn't feel like a different experience from the listener's perspective. So it really does depend on how you are running ads because with dynamically inserted ads, you're going to have a much higher frequency than you will with those embedded ads, right? So let's say that you have a show that's getting 10,000 downloads per episode in a 30 day period. You might in that case get in front of roughly 10,000 people. But if you're only running, let's say three ads, one per month, it's going to take you probably four months before you really see any results. Whereas with dynamic insertion, if you run for a four week period, that means that you are, and instead of 10,000, maybe you're getting 50,000 impressions over a four week period then you have the ability to create a much greater frequency much quicker than you do with the embedded ad read. So it really depends. And one thing to know going in is that most shows are set up to do one or the other. So it's not something that you as an advertiser can choose. If you decided that you really wanted to advertise on Joe Rogan's podcast, Joe Rogan is doing dynamic ad insertion. So that's what you have to do. You don't get to go to Joe and say, I'd rather do embedded, please. So it just depends on the type of show that that you're choosing. Not the type, but the show that you're choosing and what they're set up for. But we do want to make sure that you are looking to get I would say at least a three impression frequency with an audience member. Obviously, we all know and have heard a bazillion times that you need seven to 10, you know, impressions on someone before they're going to make a buying decision. I tell people it depends a lot on how well known your brand is. If you have a brand new e-commerce business or if you have a brand new product that no one has ever heard of, you're going to need a higher frequency than someone who is, you know, like Match.com, for instance, They have 98% brand recognition in the US, so they don't need to run as many ads to get the same kind of impact. But I would say I personally wouldn't run less than like a three frequency test. Got it. Okay. And then you mentioned earlier about advert positions in the the episode, because there's a lot of different terminology for this that people use. So could you give us a very quick guide to where adverts might appear? Sure. So the terms you'll hear in podcasting are pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll, which are all very self-explanatory. Pre tends to come at the very beginning of the podcast. Sometimes that's the minute you push play, it'll run. Sometimes it's within the first bit of content. Mid comes within the content of the podcast. And then a post-roll usually runs at the very end of a podcast. I don't ever recommend people run post-roll ads because not many of us are going to say, oh, the podcast over, but there's an ad I can listen to. Let me (laughs) stick around and listen to the ad, right? Um, So I don't recommend, especially if you've not done podcast advertising before, that you start with post-rolls. The recommendation typically is a mid-roll ad. And the reason that that's a recommendation is because most people, when they're listening to a podcast ad or podcast, they're going to be engaged in doing something else, whether that's exercising or housework or commuting or what have you. And they are less likely because they probably aren't holding the phone in their hand to push fast forward. Whereas if you push play and the first thing you hear is an ad, then you're more likely to fast forward through it. Now, again, getting back to what we talked about on good quality ad reads, if you push play and you can't tell the ad is an ad for you know a few seconds, that's also a plus, right? But yeah, mid-roll ads tend to be the best placement, especially if you're starting out. Um, pre-rolls certainly aren't bad either, but I would not do a post-roll. Got it. And, um, and you will often find, certainly in my experience, that podcasters will add a pre-roll, a post-roll option to their advertising, just to suck up any extra budget you've got. Um, I shouldn't say that <laughs> on the podcast, but it's often the, oh, you've bought the mid-roll. Would you like also like the post-roll just for an extra bit of cash? Um, yeah. So just because they're often the cheap one doesn't mean it's a good place to start with your testing. That is what we're saying. Yeah. Um, so when we talk influencer marketing more generally, we talk about running a you know a test campaign where you identify between five and ten influencers to run a small test with. You know you're not going to start with Joe Rogan. Um, you know you're going to start with with a selection to see who works with and then work with those again in the future. Is it the same with podcast advertising? Is that a good way to start? 
Absolutely. That is, that is what we recommend. And I usually tell folks that they should start with five podcasts because we've seen again and again and again that some work and some don't. And my input is, is that number one, the reason that ads may or may not work is how much the host actually likes your product. Now, I have been shocked in my career in podcasting how many podcasters will turn down advertisers. It happens fairly frequently, to be honest, because that host has work to cultivate their audience and they don't necessarily want to bring a product to them that they don't feel like they can speak about or actually like or get behind. So that does happen. But then to be honest, there's a segment of people who are like, eh, I'll run that ad. I don't know if I like that product or not, but you're going to pay me money. Sure. I'll, I'll say that I like it, but like, do they really like it or are they just getting on there? And I think if you really know a host, you can tell whether they really like something or not. The gold is usually in those hosts where they're like, I love this product. If they stop advertising with me, I'm still going to use this product because it's amazing. Those are the types of hosts that you want to find and you have to run some ads to find them. So you want to make sure that you're finding those hosts that really can get behind the product, that love the product, that really want to be ambassadors. Next, the audience engagement can make a huge difference. There are certainly lots of podcasts out there where they have very, you know, transient audiences where maybe people come and listen to an episode here or there, but they're really not forming that relationship with the host. And so what we're looking for, um, especially from an influencer perspective is we want this host that has their thousand true fans, right. That really knows who their audience is. They know who's going to watch, you know, uh, listen to their show. They're, they know that when they say, Hey, you know, make sure you go out and buy this product that their audience is actually going to do that. And that's a really hard thing to determine before you run ads. So having that engagement process is really important. And then, you know, number three goes, you know, closely with number one, but how good is the ad read? Because the actual ad read can make a huge difference in whether you have success. So typically what we recommend is that people pick those five shows that they think they're going to try. And if you get five shows out the gate that give you good results, then you have just (laughs) struck gold because not all five of them are going to work. You know, maybe, maybe three of them will, maybe two of them will, but then you, you dig deeper and you're like, okay, these two really worked. Why? What about this um, made them work? And then try to really dissect that. And then you want to try and go find other shows that are similar to the ones that succeeded. And so really it's just this constant iterative process, which is really similar to the way that people go about buying influencer marketing in general. The other thing, which I think we all know when we talk about influencer marketing is some of the mega, you know, influencers really pull less than some of the mid-level shows because I'm not listening to the show because this person's a superstar. I'm listening because I really like the person and I really like the content. So oftentimes going straight to the top isn't a good place to go either. So like you mentioned, pick five, start with like smaller to mid-level, test it out and go from there. Brilliant. Thank you, Heather. Right. We are now going to pause for a reminder of our sponsors um, and then we'll be talking about the wider world of influencer marketing. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com forward slash master plan. That's K-L-A-V iyo.com slash master plan. Okay, Heather, so far we've gone deep into podcast advertising. Now you get to wow us with your insider knowledge about the whole of influencer marketing. So for the following questions, your answer can be anything to do with influencer marketing, which of course does include podcast advertising. Heather, are you ready? I am ready. Excellent. Let's start with newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step with influencer marketing, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? 
In terms of getting started as a newbie, I would say really you want to dive into the audience profile. That's the most important. So you as a retailer, an e-commerce um, business owner, you know who your audience is. And what we want to do is find podcasts that also have that audience. So that is the very most important piece. So my advice is that you, you choose one of the marketplaces because marketplaces have thousands of different podcasts on them. So you could go on to um, sites like AdvertiseCast or Podcorn or Zook, and they have got lots of different shows on them. And so you can just really go through those different shows and kind of get a sense for what is out there. So if you take in mind um, that audience profile that you're looking for, and then you go on those sites, it's a really good place just to get started because there is so many um, options that are there. Yeah, those sites are super simple to use. We've run campaigns with Podcorn. So um, yeah, super easy place to get started and understand what's going on. Right then, uh, once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve influencer marketing performance? So we didn't talk much about tracking, but you definitely need to make sure that you have a tracking mechanism in place. Of course, you hopefully have really kind of defined what your goals are for the campaign and what your expectations are. So once you have those defined expectations, you want to make sure that you're tracking the results. And typically, you want to use that unique URL or promo code to see what kind of results you're getting. There are also sites out there like Podsite, um, sites is S-I-G-H-T um, or Chartable that allow you to use pixel tracking for attribution, which can definitely help if you're looking to track results. But you want to make sure that you know what is working and what is not working. And then once you see the shows that are working, of course, you want to analyze them. So I would look at things like, you know, if you have a product and you can tell like, is this person actually using the host? Is Are they using the product? Um, how good is the ad read, when you listen to it, do you think, oh yeah, I would want to listen to this. This sounds like intriguing or does it fall flat? And also if you're able to analyze where on your website that traffic um, is entering in. So I talked with a brand um, the other day and she mentioned that, you know, based on their tracking URL, they're able to see when that person comes to the site, which products they're going to and which products they're looking at. So if you know, gosh, all of the leads that are coming in from the Best Life podcast, they all gravitate toward, you know, our fuzzy socks, then tell that host to talk about fuzzy socks, right? So if you want to get down and dirty and really look at different elements, that's a very good way of, of going about it is just analyzing the ad, analyzing the performance, and then analyzing what people are purchasing through that podcast. In many ways, it's very similar to what the process you go through with Facebook ads in terms of this one's working. How do we make it do more? Let's improve the creative. Only you're having to give that feedback to your podcast host of choice, or rather than tweaking the targeting, you're tweaking your podcaster selection. But it's very much the same process to go through. It's just you have to have a conversation rather than create a new graphic. I'm so glad you mentioned that because podcast advertising works. We know that it works. Does it work 100% of the time? Of course not. And so your job is to optimize its success. And that's all about testing. And we are very familiar with split testing and we're very familiar with, you know, our Facebook ads and in testing the title and the image and the offer and all of those different elements to make sure that it's pulling. You need to do all those same things with podcast ads because it's not just going to work out the gate. It really does need some finessing and it's going to continue to need finessing. The best part though, is that it can pull in really great results. So if you are willing to put in the work to do that, um, you will get you know, really good returns on that work. Thanks. Well, look, if someone's listening, wants to learn more about influencer marketing, is there one cheap or free resource you would recommend? Yes, we have a guide actually on our site that you could download that would um, lay out our recommendations for podcast advertising buying. So if you go to truenativemedia.com, you will find that guide there. 
Excellent. I'm a fan of Heather's content, so I highly recommend anything she's recommending because it's going to be super good. Uh, okay, finally, crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for in influencer marketing? I really believe that as it uh, really pertains to podcast advertising in particular, programmatic or pre-recorded ads are becoming much more popular in the space. And so now is the time to really optimize on those influencer marketing ads that are happening in the podcast space. Meaning we know that this host is actually going to try the product and they're going to talk about it. So I say that now is the time to get in and get the influencer marketing aspects of podcasts going for you because as we get more and more of these pre-recorded ads coming into the space, what's going to happen is that the inventory availability for, for those influencer type ads is going to get smaller and smaller. That's one of the challenges with podcast advertising is that there's limited inventory. You know, let's say a 30 minute to an hour long podcast might only have three to four ad spots. And so you need to get in there. So I would say that today is the day definitely to take advantage of it and build those strong relationships so that you can really, you know, continue to maintain them with the host. Yeah, I think the the whole programmatic thing is going to be really interesting, especially when we sit in a podcast world where we hear the best results are coming from host reads and, you know, properly integrated recommendations within content. And then in the world of programmatic, we have a lot of, you know, kind of niche niche podcasters signing up to go, here's all my stuff. I'll, you can put ads in here. And then we just get random ads from big name brands coming in to target people with no connection at all to the content to listen to. I find it quite crazy that we're heading in both directions, but I love the fact you've twisted that into actually that means now's the time to get in so you can build the relationships because there may be podcasters out there who are perfect for your audience, but who aren't doing so well on the advertising front because they haven't yet met you and you could save them from the world of programmatic. Well, look, Heather, you've given us lots of food for thought and hopefully we've inspired a few people to get going with pod ads. How do people who want to know more get in contact with you and people who may want to get you involved in helping them get in contact with your business? So at True Native Media, we represent about 70 different podcasts. So whereas those marketplaces I had referred you to have thousands, we have a more limited, more curated list of podcasts that we represent and could help you place ads on. And if you are interested in that, you can head on over to truenativemedia.com and we would be happy to help you. I'm really active on LinkedIn, which is probably the best place to connect with me personally. If you're interested in chatting, always happy to answer any questions that you have. Excellent, Heather. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks for coming on the podcast and um, giving us such an interesting slant on the world of, of influencer marketing. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great conversation. Well, guys, there you have it. A um, whistle-stop tour through the world of podcast advertising and why it's so, so similar to influencer marketing. Um, I thought Heather really explained it incredibly well there. If you're going to have a go with podcast advertising, treat it as you would any other influencer campaign. So you're looking for a number of influencers slash podcast hosts who you think have the right audience for your product. And then it's about giving them the the bullet points they need to create those brilliant high quality host read ads to get their listeners into your product. And it's certainly not a case of one episode and boom, there go your sales. Um, you really do need that repetitive part to get it working. And um, and I would I would totally agree with what Heather said about a great place to start off is with the marketplaces. You will learn so much just running a small campaign there. And by small, I mean a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars. Just as a learning exercise, you will learn so much that will help you really construct great, bigger campaigns in the future. You can get links to everything we discussed, the full transcript of the episode, important notes, and much more at keepoptimizing.com. There you can also sign up to our monthly Q&A webinar because as part of my mission to help you improve your marketing, I've invited all our influencer marketing specialists to join us for a live Q&A session at the end of this month. That's your chance to get your questions answered. To join us, just go to keepoptimizing.com to sign up. There you'll find when it's happening. And if it's already happened, you'll be able to watch the replay. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. We are partway through our month all about influencer marketing. 
Um, so do have a listen to the episode that's already live and the ones that are coming up where we'll be kind of getting into the more traditional side of influencer marketing. And if you know anyone who is currently trying to get their, their influencer marketing better or about to take those first steps, do let them know about the show because I produce it to help as many of you as possible to improve the performance of your e-commerce marketing. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z.